we jet set to one of Asia's bustling cities that includes some warmth in the loo. In London, we find the newest trend in online sports betting. Pasadena has the Rose Bowl and one of the best Thai tapa spots. And the weirdest golf tournament you will ever see. All next on Undercover Jet Setter. Hi everyone, John Daly here with Susan Anzalone and we are in Seoul, South Korea and it's actually kind of chilly here. Yeah, it's very, very chilly. We're pretty, pretty cold right now. And one reason is because this is on the same latitude as New York, so it's just like New York City in January. Yeah. And it is chilly. It is very, very cold and we discovered that and who would have thought? Seoul and New York, same exact weather, same latitude. Something fascinating and scientific. You explained that Seoul is a combination of New York and San Francisco. And actually you're kind of seeing it here because we're up on a big hill and I would not not have thought that Seoul had so many hills so it's kind of got that San Francisco feel to it but it does have that New York City uh, vibe because when we were in those stores yesterday there was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of people buzzing around and uh, there, was, there was definitely a, a vibe here that reminds you a lot uh, of the United States. There's a lot of American stuff here. Yeah, no, absolutely. And he here's the other interesting thing. On one level would be like a whole food hall, like you find in Harrods of London. The next level was more of a market, like a, a market, like a Shaylin market, a market where you'd go to get deals and bargains and there's booze everywhere and things like that. The next level of, of three more levels is all designer stuff. Tiffany's, Dolce & Gabbana, Chanel. Um, so that was kind of interesting to find that in different layers going up. What'd you call it? Uh, Herod's on steroids? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of was. Yeah, at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of a lot of American stuff, we were in Itaewon, which is a section of Seoul, and you introduced me to that. Uh, and what's fascinating is that it is it's very Americanized because there are so many American troops here. That's right, yeah, and uh, they still cater to the U.S. troops and the GIs. There's so much English there if you go to any place else in Seoul. It's really not a lot of English that you see on signs or anything like that, people speaking English. Here, there is very much in that vein of um, everybody speaking English, catering to the U.S. and the GIs. Um, also, a lot of restaurants, tons of restaurants, all jam-packed together. You know, like a lot, like you kind of see in, you know, France or Italy in some ways, um, but all different kinds of food. Thai, Italian, German, and we actually had Texas barbecue. Texas Southern barbecue. <laughs> with gumbo, <laughs> so it was kind of interesting. Yeah, we should also thank our, our, our buddy over there, Monty, who actually uh, directed us to this. And Monty actually is a graduate of Cal Berkeley, and he has now moved back here, and he's living here. But we had a little bit of gumbo, had a little uh, little southern sausage there, and right. uh, sausage it, was, mustard. it was kind of an interesting feel. What, what's ironic, too, is that while we were here, the U.S. government just signed again the agreement, the military agreement with South Korea. So uh, that is definitely going to be here for a while. So when you do come over here, you do have a feel that there is parts of America. Here. They have a very, very intense work ethic and that makes them very, very hard workers. They're so committed. They're passionate about what they're doing. And so because of that, they really treat their business like a business. They're entrepreneurs, but they're very serious and they are organized. They are on time, they have meetings, uh, they show up in suits, and they arrange things so that it's all in the, the form of a regular business. And it's actually something to admire very much. Well, one of the other things we found too when we were actually shooting some of these, uh, some of these meetings, some of these trainings, there were so many women here. And what they explained to us is that really women have a lot of the economic control of the family and at the same time two men are working they've got jobs over here i was actually surprised i did not know that when i first came here and it was obviously a pleasant surprise um women here are very strong business women many times the men are acquiescing to the women as the decision makers not just in the home but there's many business partners and partnerships of male female they acquiesce to the women you should learn something from this actually it's <laughs> just an aside but um i thought that was very interesting and it it also speaks to the fact that what we've learned is the women are the economic decision makers and the financial rulers in the household. So because they're making the decisions about the money, they're also then able to go out and work and earn an income part-time as entrepreneurs, bring income into the household, but also choosing to spend the income that is coming into the household 
as they see fit for the household. Now, were you as amazed as I was when we walked around the different malls? Uh, it was a Tuesday afternoon. We were walking around the mall. The place was jam-packed. Yet Absolutely. at the same time, too, with yes. a lot of women, a lot of women buying different things. So I, I was amazed as you were about not only the seriousness of them when they're sitting in these meetings of a potential business, uh, yet at the same time, too, they're out on the streets buying part of the commerce. And uh, that was, that was actually a, a real revelation, especially if you haven't been here in uh, in South Korea before. Yeah, no, actually I said to John, what day is it? Because I was thinking it's gotta be a Saturday or Sunday. No, it was a Tuesday at 3 p.m. Normally you think everybody's inside. We're in the subway. We could barely make our way around this mall and this food court and this market because people were out running around crowded just like it was a Saturday or Sunday or think of New York in rush hour. It was like that. One of the other interesting things is we begin talking to people here about the economics that's going on here. The economy is actually doing very good here in South Korea, but there are some other things. They have high inflation, so people are worried about that. There's a lot of talk about reunification with the North. Now, you've been hearing all the stuff about Kim Jong-un, yet at the same time, too, when we talk to people here in South Korea, they want reunification because a lot of those people are blood relatives with them. On the other hand, they also realize if there is a reunification here, the North's economy is going to hurt this great economy here in South Korea. So they're worried about that. At the same time, too, they need to prepare if something like that's happening. So individuals want to get extra income. They're doing different things. The other interesting thing we found out, of course, in, in South Korea here, Samsung, the smartphone maker, is, is, is king here. So is Hyundai, the car maker. But when you look at all the sales receipts that come in, 30% come from those two companies. So this country is reliant on those two companies. And the people here realize that. You go back to what you're saying. They're industrious people. They like to work. Yet at the same time, too, they realize there is a vulnerability of what's going on with them, not only economically, but also politically as well. So as a result of it, you see a lot of people working hard and working here an awful lot. Now the big thing I found, the big shock for me was, being the golfer that I am, the golf nuts that are in South Korea, Absolutely. in our hotel, there is actually a driving range downstairs. And it was a neat driving range. Yeah, it had a lot of stuff. I mean, there was lessons going on, putting, everybody was able to practice a lot of things, and you, you actually hit some balls. What we found out was that people are obsessed. They're even more obsessed, I would say, than Americans. You cannot believe the golf ranges that are here popping up in the city that are all around here for people to go to, and that was kind of a shock for me. The other shock for me was... Well, I know what you're gonna say. What am I going to say? The toilet culture. I wasn't going to say anything about that. They have heated toilet seats. I knew you'd love that. that? Heated toilet seats. This is unbelievable. Uh, yeah, that was actually pretty cool. Yes, yeah. and, and adjustable too. You can you can decide what range of heat you want. Actually, some toilets out in public places even let you play a little music or sounds of something else in case you don't want anybody to hear anything going on. <laughs> That would never happen, needless to say. The other thing is that it actually washes you. Yeah, I mean that's amazing. Yes. Yeah, that's it's amazing. got uh, washing from behind and front. Again, you can adjust the water temperature, all levels and degrees and angles, and you know you could kind of spend your whole day in the bathroom actually if you wanted to. What a country! No doubt about that. <laughs> when we come back, see what just might be the hottest new trend in sports betting. It's all coming up on Undercover Jet Setter, home of Jet Setter Deals. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at UC Foodie TV. We'll be right back. Cheers, everyone. Welcome back. So we went to London to check out the newest, hottest trends in the world of online sports betting. And what we found was someone injecting digital steroids into fantasy sports. We are at the Ice Gaming Convention in London and we found what could be the new age of fantasy sports. It's called Live Plus. And no, the fantasy part is not these lovely gals in the booth of the developer, but clearly this new form of fantasy sports is for the young and active. Marionis Schiaponis with PlayVenture, the developer, went into depth with me about the game that allows you to play fast with in-game propositions. So Live Plus is, is it fantasy sports? Is it betting? What is it? Live Plus is 
fantasy, plus live betting, plus pool betting, plus entertainment. And so this is something you can literally bet on different proposals within a game. Yeah, exactly. You have, you get the players that live, li love live betting. You get the players that love fantasy. You get the players that en enjoy pool because they offer big prices. You have them all together in a big event, big major sport event where you have live feed at, at the same time. So you play the game and you can see it. And you compete for prizes that can get, uh, you know, sky high. If you have 100,000 players playing in one game, you can have a, a prize of 10 million uh, euros. Over 60% of the players win something at the end. I mean, they don't, they don't leave the game empty-handed. The first, the first winner gets over 20% of the pool. It can be applied to any sport, depending on the popularity. We have football at this point. Basketball is, a, is the next option to come, which is much, much faster than tennis. American football, if it's, pre, if it's needed. Okay, every game that has live action, scoring and uh, half times and things like this can be implemented. The bets are proposition bets. Now in Vegas, the only time they do proposition bets are usually like Super Bowl. Yeah, exactly. But this is like Super Bowl every day. This is, yeah, Super Bowl every day. Okay, it's not every day because there's not every day a major event, but it's almost Super Bowl three times a week. Can, can this, can people play this in the United States? I cannot say if they can play in the United States because I'm not the regulator, but if fantasy is allowed in the United States, it's the same thing. It's based on the same uh, proposition. People gather the money together and the money is distributed to the people. You're not playing fixed odds. It's not fixed odds gaming. You're not betting on fixed odds. You're, you're, you're competing with each other. It's a competition game. And, but there's transparency here. I mean, you know know what the other bets are and what other people are There betting. is full transparency in the leaderboard of the game. You can see exactly what each player has played. At the end of every tournament, you can see how the winner came up, what was their bet. It's 100% transparent and also this helps the player decide their strategy during the game because they see what the others are playing and they're trying to overcome them by giving a better strategy. Now the question is, will we see it in the U.S.? My guess is that some states that make provisions and regulations for fantasy sports will allow it. But even some of them may look at this as casino-style gambling. We will see. And we'll keep our eye on Play Venture for you and let you know what they're up to. And after the break, when we come back, we will meet a woman from Thailand, back in the U.S., who knows all about authentic Thai food. Welcome back. Next, we found one of the best Thai tapas restaurants, certainly in Pasadena, California, but possibly on the west coast of the United States. That's right. Rice Thai Tapas is owned by an amazing young woman and chef who knows all about truly authentic Thai food. A Buddha wall greets you at Rice Thai Tapas in Pasadena, California, offering wisdom about authentic Thai food. The owner is Kunshi, originally from Thailand. Her last name is long and complicated, so she just goes by Kunshi. But with these small, authentic dishes, she might only need her first name. Now, besides eating many small tapa dishes here, you will learn a lot about authentic Thai food, as Kunshi explains. The concept behind this is authentic Thai taste, flavor, with a presentation of a flair presentation and tapas, um, small plates, small why plates. Why, why'd you do that? Uh, because I figured that if you have a group of friends that comes and enjoy dinner, you want to be able to try many things. Or even if you're just the two of you, I want people to be able to explore the Thai food more than just two plates and that's it you know if you have small plate you are able to try five six different things and you'll be more knowledgeable about thai food you have more no, you taste no, you're, of you're the different flavors same. that we have, have and not just stick with just two and most people when they found something they like they tend to order the same thing then thing but they haven't tried the other 20 items that's on the menu
Okay, let's get into some of the dishes. The first is a shrimp donut. Now, this is the type of donut you want. Yeah, it is my kind of donut, and they only have it at limited availability, but it's basically ground shrimp and egg coated with panko, and then they serve it with a mango aioli, which is very delicious. And these are Tom Yum wings. These are their version of buffalo wings. That's right. And Tom Yum is a popular sauce that is used in this type of cuisine. It's made of lemongrass, lime, fish sauce, chili peppers, and gal and gal, which is a type of ginger. And it's a sweet, sour, and spicy flavor. And you might have had Tom Yum soup, which is usually how they serve it. All right, this might be my favorite dish, the beef wrap. Oh, this was fabulous. It's, uh, again, sometimes limited, but it's herbs wrapped around a seared rare filet mignon and then served with a spicy sauce. Oh, this was so good. That one is authentic Thai with a flair. The flair being the way it's presented. Uh, the authentic Thai is in the sauce. The tom yum <laughs> flavor of spiciness, lemony, and a little bit of sweet sourness taste. What you do, we slice the filet mignon and we roll very, very uh, fresh vegetables, uh, organic spring greens, uh, microgreens. We roll it up and we put it on the dish and then we kind of like pour the sauce over it. This was a feast for the eyes. Oh, it certainly was. And this is on the menu actually called rice barbecue. But what it is is a marinated Cornish hen, and then they serve it with their secret Northeastern sauce. And this was beautifully presented. And what they do is on top of a bunch of garnish, which includes eggplant, they place all of their entree items. So they always have this beautiful garnish underneath. And that really is part of her concept, which is to serve authentic Thai dishes uh, with a twist, and the twist being the way that they're presented and served to you on the plate. Now this lamb chop was succulent and tasty. Oh, it certainly was. This is lemongrass lamb. It's a medium rare New Zealand lamb chop rubbed with lemongrass and then served with the mango chili lime sauce. It definitely was succulent and with a little spice, absolutely delicious. All right, these are called gangster noodles, or as I like to call them, gangsta noodles. <laughs> right. It's their own creation, and yeah, they're going all gangsta on us with these noodles, that's for sure. So it's basically a pan-fried mung bean sheet, which makes it gluten-free, uh, ground chicken, shrimp, their house sauce, and then pieces of herbs, mushroom, and veggies all mixed together. This was really good. If you want to have authentic Thai, you need to know how to do Pod Thai. Yes, that's absolutely correct. And they do traditional old school style here. They use chicken and shrimp, a kick of spice, bean sprouts, eggs, peanuts, and Chinese chives. Now, here's a great demonstration from one of our beautiful chefs here in the kitchen. You can make your own Pod Thai at home. Now that's tamarind sauce that she's using and they use that instead of paprika. Tamarind sauce is something that you would find on the streets of Thailand. And also in that traditional style of pad thai, those are rice noodles that they're using there. And those are gluten free, so if you're watching your glutens, you can eat pad thai. And we're talking a lot about tom yum, but you can also get it in the drinks, here is a tom yum martini. From the tom yum soup, the tom yum soup has sweet, sour, and spicy taste. And we figure, you know what? We need to do some kind of signature cocktail, and it has to be like Thai. So we thought we'll do the tom yum cocktail. And the way we do it is we actually infuse it with lemongrass and carefully which is the ingredient in the tom yum. And we use dry crushed chili, which is also used in the tom yum. And then the lime and then the sugar on the rim. And what's, what's strange is it tastes like a cocktail, but you get that sort of the warm spicy. feeling yes. going down mm -hmm. the esophagus. Is that what you were planning? Yes, because when you drink the tom yum soup, when you swallow the soup, you get the burning sensation of the spiciness. 
So you get the same reaction from the cocktail, except it's more cold rather than hot, but you still get the same sensation. Rice Thai tapas in Pasadena, like your taste buds took a Thai vacation. We'll have more from Kunchi, the chef and owner of Rice Thai tapas in other shows. Still ahead, John plays golf in drag. You have to see this. It is not pretty. So I ended up playing in this golf tournament, five days, a Ryder Cup-like event, and it was in St. Augustine, Florida, between Europeans and Americans, and it was a fun event. But on one of the days, it wasn't about the golf, was it? No. It was about the club. We are in St. Augustine, Florida, at the King and Bear Golf Course on day two of the Euro US Cup, and no, it is not Comic Con or a revival of the Village partner, people, partner, so but it is dress-up day for each player, and no one disappointed. Elvis appeared while getting some help from Captain Kirk. Like I actually Kato showed off my feminine Ford side, contest. but I was mild or boring compared to most of the Europeans. Yes, Charlie Chaplin joined us, and it's been a tradition here for a number of years. All right, so how, how did this start? Well, uh, we have a guy in this group who's called Kato. He always dresses kind of fancy, and uh, so we just tried to outdo him. And it, uh, well, if you look around, it kind of escalated into something uh, more wild, but uh, it's it's maybe the best day of the U.S. Cup every year. And yes, we played in those outfits. Now, is it difficult hitting with the cape on? I took the cape off. Actually, I got it specially made so I can actually take the cape off. So a little, little Hollywood, Hollywood style there. And the sunglasses and the, and the wig, they were okay? Yeah, they were got a little uh, boily up there, but uh, we kept it on all day long. But the winner, based on the vote by the staff at King & Bear, is John Woodhouse. I am man, ugly woman. Love the Kato Award. I'm, one of my uh, goals every outing is to win this award. Originality. My goal for this time is to run the trifecta, so club champion. Kato and what uh, what else is there? what else we got? Whatever award there is, I'm very honored, very honored to accept this award. And that Ryder Cup style match, well, the Euros with their dazzling outfits now have a four and a half to three and a half lead over the U.S. More coming from the Euro U.S. Cup in St. Augustine, Florida. Very fetching. You should <laughs> yeah. wear that on the show. <laughs> I don't think so. Actually, it was a great event, and uh, if I didn't wear those clothes, I would have been penalized strokes. That was part of the deal. So, and no, 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 no. That's why everybody was wearing it that way. Now, if you're interested in putting together an event like this for you and your buddies around the world, all you have to do is contact us. Yep, just go to this site, jetsetterdeals.com. It's exclusive for you, our viewers, and they'll help you out with absolutely everything you need. And I'll actually have more from the Euro US Cup on future shows. Different clothes? Yes better clothes. Can't wait. Uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to it too. So we will see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.